And one of the Alfa Romeos, Giacomelli. It's Giacomelli in the Alfa Romeo and Salazar out at the beginning of the Belgian Grand Prix. And Nigel Mansell is stuck getting a push start. Yes, that's most unfortunate for those those two cars. It's so narrow, the track there at Zelda at the start, that really when one car uh, stalls like that, there goes Derek Warwick just getting away, a bit of a late starter. Both drivers all right. The car's probably not damaged very much. It's just a little bump in the things. But it's so narrow, when one car stops on the grid, it's almost inevitable that contact will be made. And we've had some, a lot of start line accidents at Zelda. I really think that they should widen uh, that track there for the start lap one then and uh, soon we will see we hope well it's one of the Renaults that's for sure and behind him is Rosberg and I can't identify which of the Renaults is in the lead at the moment but certainly it is Renaults first and third with the very determined finish driver Kiki Rosberg it looks like Rene Arnoux and it is Rene Arnoux who has had such terrible luck this season and up behind Alain Cross is Nicky Lauda in the Barbara McLaren and tyres as ever are going to count in this race so Rosberg second then Cross goes through then Lauda there's Alvaretto there are Patrese and Pique and through they go and you will have noticed that Derek Warwick had a bad start at the beginning so one lap has now been completed there is they spread out as they go down to the canal turn with the enormous canal you will see in the background as they turn. There it is. And René Arnoux is, as he has done so many times before, leading from the start with Rosberg, Frost, Lauda, De Cesaris, Alvaretto, Patrese, Piquet. And there is Elio De Angelis in about ninth position. Now this is the second lap up to the chicane. I see some yellow flags waving up at the chicane at the, at the top of the picture just in the background there. But uh, we didn't get a chance to see what the incident was, but it looks as if somebody's gone off there. Well, René Arnoux will be praying, I'm sure, even this early in the race, that he has car reliability this time. Yeah. You will recall at San Marin, uh, Marino, he had the most appalling luck. There is the very talented Alvaretto, still ahead in the Candy Tyrrell of the two turbo BMW Brabham cars of Patrese and Pique as the leader goes through. Yes, Alvaretto has certainly come on a lot and it looks, it looks now as if Ken Tyrrell's put together a much better car than he has had for the last couple of years. Alvaretto impressed a great deal at Imola in the last Grand Prix, but it was difficult to make comparisons then because it wasn't a full field there and there weren't, uh, of course, all the poker teams. But uh, he impressed there and he's certainly confirming it here. He's qualified very well indeed. He was very quick in qualifying and uh, he's at the moment doing a very competent job in the race. Well, let's watch carefully Kiki Rosberg. I remind you that in second place he is in the new FW08 Williams car. He is on Goodyear tyres and the leader, René Arnoux, is on Michelin. Tyres are going to be very, very critical in this race. And as the fuel loads light, we expect to see them go a lot quicker. And now you look down and you can see the gap. When I took it on the stopwatch, it was four-fifths of a second between the yellow and white turbo Renault in the lead of René Arnoux and the white and green Williams of Kiki Rosberg. And Rosberg closing right up at the very, very tight right-hander. And then it crossed. You can see he's taking the left-hand side of the straight to make sure then he has the inside line where they turn into the chicane at the end. He's kept that all in one piece, but Watson will be looking but for ways around. But I think Rosberg has uh, the experience and the lack of inhibition to, to blatantly block for this time. I just think that uh, it would be poor effort if he let Watson pass. The circuit is not conducive to overtaking. Two laps to go, but uh, this is where Watson should be attacking. But he's dropped back a bit. He wasn't really in a position to attack there for some reason. Down to the boulder bird, and off goes for the Rosberg, and Watson is through. Change of lead. Rosberg goes out, hits the curving at the side, and now, as the crowd waves, let's have a look at it again. Rosberg down. Let's see where Rosberg stepped out. Yes, well, he came in too quick there, Murray, and that really was, I have to say, a very, very poor piece of driving by Rosberg, under pressure, 
as I was saying, it was going to be very difficult for him to, to uh, for, for Watson to pass if he blocked properly. The one thing when you're blocking somebody you don't have to do is to drive fast. There was absolutely no reason for Rosberg to arrive fast into the chicane. They're on. Watson's now on his last lap, a formality. Uh, to compete that it should be and Rosberg must be kicking himself but that was a blatant mistake uh, as a result of him flying completely the wrong tactic there was no reason for him to be trying to go fast which is what happened and he should have just been concentrating on keeping a clean line and keeping in front of Watson on the straights well Rosberg tapped his helmet for some reason whether it was to say I need my brains testing or whether it, whether he's very tired I know not it makes no difference because on the very last lap John Watson is on his way to his third World Championship victory in his long career after having won in Britain last year and having won in Austria way back in 1976. This is going to be the third Grand Prix victory for the Marlborough MP4 car, the McLaren car, and there's a disconsolate Rosberg coming through, and now John Watson is within sight of that chequered flag, he's going down the finishing straight, and the Belgian Grand Prix has been won by John Watson, with, where is he, Kiki Rosberg, yes, in second position across the line, and then behind him, we haven't seen Lauda for a long time, should be louder in third.